Hey guys, Sean here. You know for us gold and silver stackers, it seems rather crazy that the whole world isn't taking precious metals seriously enough. Everyone seems to know that they are good inflation hedges and it's smart to invest in some, but just how many people actually do buy physical gold and silver on a regular basis? I'm not sure about you, but when I ask my friends and family, it's less than 5% for me and that is very worrying. You know, actions speak louder than words and in this video, I really want to discuss what's stopping people from buying gold and silver, right? I believe there are deep mental blocks being woven in society today that are preventing people from really objectively seeing what gold and silver truly is, right? It's truly all in the mind and everyone, including me and you, had to break through these five mental prisons before we could really see the truth. Let's dive in. Now, a lot of us believe that the prices of gold and silver are being manipulated, the prices are being kept suppressed by the huge paper market. But I think there's something more sinister happening today than that. And it's perception control. It's about showing you what they want you to see, but not what you need to see. We know that gold and silver are breaking out and are showing incredible gains this year. We are talking about a 5% gain in gold that broke past $1,900 and a 4% gain in silver to over 24 bucks a day. But did you know that they might actually be a few of the best performing assets so far in 2022? You know the S&P 500 is down by almost 10%, Nasdaq has lost 14% of its value and Bitcoin has just fallen off a cliff. But the crazy thing is that no attention is being given to gold or silver the media coverage online is still all about stocks and crypto and I find that truly insane. If I type into Google best investment 2022, I don't see any gold and silver, right? All I see is either tech stocks or crypto. And if we look at CNBC's latest guests, you know they love to interview all these investment gurus. All I see is crypto and tech stock pundits like Kerry Wood trying to justify her Ark Innovation Fund which is down by 33% this year. I believe this is a serious reason why many people aren't invested into gold and silver yet. It's because many never even get a chance to discover about precious metals. The media coverage is trying to push the investments that they like and they're being incentivized to really try their best to prevent the bubble from popping completely. They don't want the music to stop. Remember guys, a higher gold price just shows that the dollar is failing and that might be the truth they just want to obscure. I really challenge you to go to your local news channel and see if you can even find anything remotely about gold and silver. And here's the hilarious part guys. Even though precious metals aren't getting their well-deserved attention, gold and silver prices are still breaking out and rising. Really something to think about. I think one of the biggest reasons people don't buy gold and silver is a very simple one. They find it too expensive today compared to yesterday, right? You know, a lot of us, when it comes to buying anything, and I don't care if it's a stock or a new sofa for your home, we want a good deal and we kind of tend to get locked into the past. We have a price memory about something and it's really holding us back from kind of accepting what an item costs today. You know, a lot of investors just cannot accept the fact that, you know, the price of gold has risen substantially compared to 5 or 10 years ago and I can't really blame them, right? Remember guys, from 1980 to around 2006, gold was trading around $300 to $600 an ounce. It was boring as hell and it didn't really make any big moves until 2008. And we all know what happened back then, right? You know, the first QE started and the Fed began dropping helicopter money into the system. And it's really only after all these bailouts and money printing that gold and silver really shot up to all new time highs, right? The big issue is that most people just don't see the cause and effect of this and it's hard for them to just see a piece of metal being worth double or triple the price in just 10 or 20 years. You know, when I went to buy gold a few years ago, it was trading at around $1,500 at the time. I went to a bank to buy it. Yes, in Singapore and I think in Canada as well, you can actually buy physical gold at a bank. But anyways, the teller actually asked me if I was sure about buying gold and that at $1,500 an ounce, it looked awfully expensive to her, right? You know, it's not even her money and she's already afraid of a high gold price. And I think this is something that we all need to understand, right? The moment someone is anchored to a certain price memory, it's going to be hard for them to see the light. 
a lot of mainstream investors today are still stuck in a mindset of why should I buy it today when it was cheaper yesterday, when it was cheaper a year ago, kind of mindset. But things change, fundamentals change. And with all this new money being printed, you know, the system is flush to the hilt with all this cash, you really don't need to be an economist to really know what's going to happen down the road, right? There's much more money chasing fewer goods and gold and silver happens to be one such asset that money is flowing into. Now, as gold and silver investors, we are used to the physical premiums on our coins and bars. I mean, we tolerate it, we understand it's a necessary evil, and we definitely would love for it to go down. However, losing money upfront to the premiums is something that many investors can't swallow, right? An ounce of gold today is around $1,900 and has a premium of anywhere from 3 to 5%, and that's an instant loss of almost $100 at a higher end. But it's nothing compared to silver, right? So this silver maple over here might be only around $24 at spot, but with the premiums, it can actually reach almost $30, right? And that means the premium is around 25%. Most investors just can't stomach that, but they're missing out on the point of physical metals. The reason why we pay the physical premium isn't because we are suckers or we love burning away our cash. It's because we want to have wealth outside of the system, right? Gold and silver, they are true decentralized wealth and there's a premium to that. There is value to that. And that's the problem that many investors face today. When you get too used to an environment where things like stocks and ETFs, you know, they have near zero transaction fees, when it comes time to really buy physical gold and silver, it's going to really feel outrageous and they might feel angry at high premiums. But here's the catch 22, right? Premiums will only continue to get higher down the road. I think as more people gradually wake up to gold and silver, you know, and as interest builds, premiums will rise over time, right? So if you don't buy today, then when are you going to buy? 10 years down the road when the premiums double? Now, the next reason is the oldest argument in the book against precious metals, and it's that gold and silver doesn't pay dividends. They don't generate income. You know, it's really a defense mechanism that people activate every time they think about the precious metals, right? And the big issue is that people tend to confuse wealth preservation with capital growth. They aren't the same thing. The reason why people invest in gold and silver is to stay rich, not to get rich. You know, gold and silver has a proven track record for thousands of years to preserve wealth. Why do you think people run to them when there's hyperinflation in the local currency? Just look at Argentina, Venezuela, Turkey and Germany. You know, time and time again, people rush towards precious metals. But many investors are turned off by the fact that gold and silver doesn't generate income. And that's because it isn't meant to turn you from a homeless person into a multi-millionaire. You know, there are 1,001 other things you can do to build wealth faster and gold and silver isn't one of them. The thing about companies is that sure, they produce things, they sell services, they can grow and they can give dividends. But it isn't guaranteed, right? Nothing is guaranteed in the investment world and people tend to forget that a stock can also fall in value, right? I know it's shocking to most people, but stocks can also drop in price. Just look at Facebook. Its price has literally collapsed, and the last time I checked, Facebook has never paid a dividend, right? You know, it's a great company. I use the platform. I love the technology, but its time might have come. And if Zuckerberg has a misadventure in the metaverse, if he can't solve the virtual reality problem, it could be the end for Facebook, right? It could be the final curtain call. But gold and silver will still endure. You know, it has held value long before Facebook was created and it will hold value long after Facebook is gone. Now, speaking of tech stocks and high returns, this brings me to the next reason. You know, there was a time when 5 to 7% returns a year was considered outstanding, right? If you could manage that consistently, people will call you a genius. But today, if you can't double your money in six months, everyone's uninterested, right? They get bored easily and they want to move on to the next shiny object. I think the big crypto and Bitcoin boom has really messed with people's heads and we need results instantly and it has to be big. Anything below 20% gains in a month is too slow, right? And the big issue is that gold and silver helps to protect against a crisis and when speculative assets crash, 
precious metals protects your downside. But today, it's all about the up upside, right? It's all about the upside and how much I can make. And I think that's really unhealthy. There's really a lot of speculation going on today. And I have friends who are willing to risk it all for 10 times return, right? I'm talking about people who are really ready to bet their last dollar to get a 1,000% return, even though there's a big chance the entire investment can crash to zero. I know it's an insane way to think, but here we are, folks. And here's the kicker, right? What most investors fail to realize is that gold does gain value over time, and when it does revalue, right, it really spikes up real hard when you least expect it. You know, just a few weeks ago, it was under $1,800, and now it's over $1,900 just like that. But hey, Shiba Inu and Dogecoin are the better investments, right? And we are all going to the moon, correct? So here's the big question. Is it possible to save our fellow brothers and sisters? Will people wake up in time before a currency collapse happens? I think that more people will eventually wake up, but it's going to be harder for people five years down the road to get into gold and silver than today. Just think about it. Right now, we already feel that gold is too high and silver isn't that cheap anymore at $24. But what happens when it moves to $50 an ounce or even $100 an ounce? And the red money is being printed to oblivion, it could very well reach that point. And I think the best way to actually help people is not to directly try and convince them. There's so much information around that you can't realistically force feed them. It's really trying to force them to drink from a fire hose, right? It won't work. And if you just randomly pop up the gold and silver conversation, say, you know, at a gathering or at a weekly barbecue, people will think that you're doomsday prepper. I think a better approach is to just talk to your friends and your family, your immediate circle about the challenges of everyday life. You know, about how inflation is ridiculous, about how houses today are getting expensive, and then maybe weasel in ideas about money printing and the Fed, right? It's really about helping people take baby steps it's much better to show people videos like this and let them discover by themselves how deep the rabbit hole can actually go. Now, I don't really advocate showing people your stack, even if they're family and friends, right, for obvious safety reasons, but there's no harm bringing along a silver coin wherever you go and using it to spark conversations. Remember guys, we aren't out to save the world. We want to slowly help people wake up, right? But they have to save themselves. So there you have it guys, I believe as time goes by, wealth will be transferred from fiat currencies to people who really hold hard assets. I'm talking about real estate, farmland and of course gold and silver. We really need to be patient with people and understand it will take time for friends and family to deprogram from the matrix, right? They will have to go through their own journey and for most people, that might be seeing their money, their purchasing power just evaporate into thin air. It was already written in the constitution that gold and silver is to be used as money and nothing else. And I really won't be surprised if they come back as part of tomorrow's new monetary system. I think a return to sound money is going to be inevitable, right? It's just sooner or later. And a winning move for us is to just keep stacking what we can and helping others when we can. So let me know what you think. What held you back before you started buying gold and silver? Do you believe people are too stubborn to change? Let me know in the comments below. And if you enjoyed today's video, be sure to smash that like button and subscribe for more gold and silver videos. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you soon.